Good morning, Bucknutters. Welcome into the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Wednesday, July 22nd, 2015. I am David Biddle, and I am happy to be joined by Steve Lorenz from Wolverine 24-7. Steve, thank you very much for your time, and welcome into the show. Yeah, what's going on, Dave? Thanks for, uh, thanks for finally having me on. This is going to be a lot of fun. You know, we're going to talk about the best rivalry in college football, so, maybe, you know, in my opinion, the best rivalry in sports, so uh, it's good to have you on the show. You know, first question, it's the start of the Urban Meyer versus Jim Harbaugh era. We don't know how long it's going to last. I've dubbed it, you know, maybe it'll be the five-year war. Of course, Woody versus Bo was the 10-year war. This is really exciting stuff. Uh, two of the biggest rock stars in college football, great coaches, not just rock stars. Um, just really exciting stuff. Curious to get your perspective on uh, the beginning of the Meyer versus Harbaugh era. Sure. I mean, uh, you know, it, it is the greatest rivalry in sports, but as, as we all know, it really hasn't been much of a rivalry lately. Um, you know, I, I think from a Michigan fan standpoint, uh, there was – Definitely a certain level of excitement when Brady Hoke was hired. Uh, I think most Michigan fans kind of used to winning, uh, but expected Hoke to maybe pick it up after Rodriguez was fired. Obviously, that didn't work out. Uh, I think the Harbaugh hiring has brought an even greater level of excitement. Uh, probably one of the best coaches in the NFL game uh, last four or five years uh, to come home to Ann Arbor. Um, you know, Michigan's been dominated by not just Ohio State, but Michigan State lately, too. So uh, there's a lot of uh, hope for, for some revenge on those two programs going forward. Uh, it should be exciting. Um, but, man, the way that uh, Ohio State has built their roster, uh, it you know, I'd give them a – they're probably about a lap ahead of Michigan right now. I mean, it's uh, pretty impressive what, what Coach Meyer's done in a, in a short time. And Michigan's definitely going to – they're going to have to A, work hard, and they're going to have to – uh, recruit well to to compete with with Ohio State and Michigan State. Even during the first three years of the Meyer era, um, that game has been close every time. It's just something about that game that it, it you know it's it's a cliche, but you really can't throw out the records when the Buckeyes and Wolverines meet. And I have no doubt in Ann Arbor it's going to be a tough game this year. We'll see how it goes. Um, curious to hear how the majority of Michigan fans view Ur- Urban Meyer. Um, yeah, I'm asking you to speak on behalf of the entire fan base. No, of course there's going to be people, you know, on different sides of the coin. But if you're if if you had to guess, the majority of the fan base uh, for the Wolverines, how do they look at Urban Meyer? My guess would be that it's kind of a mix of hatred and respect. Am I am I on point there? Oh, 100. Yeah, percent That's actually uh, that's actually what I was going to say. Uh, any uh, rational fan, I guess, would not. Nobody's going to like Meyer because he coaches for Ohio State, but they also don't like him because he wins. I mean, there's just no way. Three national championships. He's got, what, one loss overall in the Big Ten, and that was in the Big Ten championship game. Uh, He's really picked up right where he left off at Florida, really. Uh, You know, and and I think it's one of those things where, um, you know, no matter who's coaching on the other sideline when those two teams meet, you know, the Michigan fans are not necessarily going to like that guy. But, yeah, I think a lot of the – vitriol and, and hatred and stuff really just comes from the fact that he's come right in and, and, and won and won big. Harbaugh right now is, um, I don't know if he's choosing his words carefully, he just hasn't taken any shots at Ohio State that I'm aware of. Does he um, does he use the Ohio thing that Brady Hoke started? Or does he refer to Ohio State as Ohio State, or does he just never talk about Ohio State? I haven't heard anything out of him. Um, you know, I think the Ohio thing is – kind of come and gone. I think the few times that he has referenced Ohio State, he's used Ohio State. I know he recently tweeted out a photo at Normandy because he, he took a vacation in Europe. He tweeted out a photo at uh, Normandy where D-Day happened with uh, a former Buckeye captain, and I can't remember who it was, and I think it was somebody who served um, talking about, and he talked about uh, Ohio State, I think is what he even said in that tweet. He He's kind of kept it quiet when it comes to Michigan State and Ohio State. I know he made the one comment about uh, Michigan State kind of being the big big kid on the block uh, right now in state, which is kind of ironic with the whole little brother angle uh, from the past. But, uh, you know, he's kind of kept it quiet. He hasn't said much about it. I know when he has been asked about it, he was asked about it really in his initial press conference, kind of dodged it a little bit. Uh, I think he his motto has kind of been – uh, that they're not going to talk about it, they're going to be about it. So um, I think you're going to see less dumb things said and done by by players and the coaches, I guess, going forward. I think they're just going to kind of keep everything in-house and, and focus on uh, trying to be the best team they can. I like what he said at his introductory press conference when he said, uh, you know, I made uh, 
guarantees earlier in my career, talking about the uh, guarantee he made in 1986 that Michigan would beat Ohio State and go on to the Rose Bowl, and he was uh, prophetic in, in that uh, statement. And uh, I'm paraphrasing what he said at his press conference, but I like that he referenced that and kind of poked fun at you know I'm, I'm done making predictions. I did that back when I was a player. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. I, you know, I know, um, you know, just like just like Urban Meyer, Urban Meyer for for the Michigan fans that might be listening out there that don't know, Ohio State fans used to hate Urban Meyer, and it, it was you know largely because of the 2006 national championship game when Florida really beat Ohio State into the ground. And but furthermore, there were some recruiting battles that didn't go Ohio State's way, and it's it's just interesting how, of course, now Ohio State fans love Urban Meyer. But for Michigan fans that don't know, Buckeye fans used to hate, not all of them, but most vast majority of Buckeye fans used to hate Urban Meyer. I'm sure you're aware of that, Steve. What's, what's your reaction to that? I mean, it is kind of funny. I mean, you, you're, again, a school like Ohio State always winning um, to play Florida, play Urban Meyer, you know, the SEC in general. Uh, I know uh, Ohio State's done better in those battles than Michigan has, but Michigan fans, I think, generally feel the same way about the SEC. Uh, especially right now when it comes to recruiting battles. Um, but, you know, it is kind of a thing where, I mean, if Michigan, say if Michigan had hired Urban Meyer, I think it would have been the exact same thing. I mean, he's been a guy, I know when Michigan uh, beat Meyer and Tebow in Lloyd Carr's final game in uh, 07, you know, he was a guy that nobody nobody really liked, nobody really cared for. But, again, I think a lot of the thing with Meyer is, is that he's won everywhere he's gone. So he's, when you win, people aren't going to like you if, unless you're their coach or you're, you're winning for their program. So, uh, you know, if, if, if by the chance that Michigan had somehow ended up with Urban Meyer in a different world, I think it'd probably be the exact same thing. As long as you're winning um, and you're doing it in a relatively uh, like a genuine, like legitimate way, uh, then you're going to be revered by whatever fan base you're coaching for as long as you're winning. Chatting with Steve Lorenz from Wolverine 24-7 here on the Bucknuts Morning 5. I am Dave Biddle. Um, looking at Michigan's team this fall, Jake Rudock transferring in. I think a lot of people outside of Michigan are probably, you know, think that, that you know, no big deal. He got beat out at Iowa. I tend to think that um, that was a really good move for Michigan because I think he's going to be an upgrade over what Shane Morris would have been as a starter. Um, Rudock was good early in his career at Iowa. That first year, he was a starter as a sophomore. Um, what's the thought up there? Give me, give us kind of the inside scoop. What are, uh, do you guys feel pretty good that you know as a fifth year senior he can step in there and uh, and do great things? Or what's just kind of the thoughts about uh, Jake Rudock? Yeah, I think so. I think you know Harbaugh has always looked for. I mean, you always want a playmaker. I mean, he had Andrew Luck at Stanford, but he's also won. You know, like any coach, but puts an emphasis on it and is not turning the ball over. That's really been that was really Michigan's Achilles heel under Brady Hope in general. I mean, their turnover margin last two seasons especially was, was horrible. Uh, you know, they finished seventh, I want to say, nationally in defense last year. And the biggest reason they were losing games is because the defense would get tired in the second half because turnovers, three and outs, you know, just inefficiency on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, you know, I know that – most people within the program are real high on, on what Tim Drevno brings at, at the offensive coordinator spot and at the offensive line coach in terms of a guy that can maybe give them enough of a running game, you know, to be able to run some successful play action stuff. Uh, Rudock's a guy, you know, I think they feel it can potentially take care of the ball for them and, and at the very least, you know, leave the defense fresh throughout the game. I mean, because Michigan's defense returns – most of its starters, most of its contributors on defense, and it should be a should be one of the best units in the country again. I mean, you know, you have Ohio State, Michigan State, Michigan. I think, in my opinion, maybe Penn State too. I think they probably, I think they have a lot of guys returning, but you know, those four defenses should be uh, great next year. And I, I really wouldn't hesitate to throw Michigan in that mix. Actually, I know um, defensive end, I think, is the one spot Michigan still needs production from that they haven't really gotten consistently. But um, you know. As long as they can get a guy to come in and play quarterback, not turn the ball over, not make the dumb mistake, and uh, move the ball down the field consistently, not constantly, but consistently at least, uh, to keep that defense fresh, then you know, I think you know, there's some reason for optimism for Michigan this year. Who's going to be the starting running back? Is it going to be Ty Isaac, maybe somebody else? Could it be running back by committee? And then second part of the question, um, is the biggest concern for Michigan fans, is it, is it the offensive line or is it somewhere else? You know, the running back question, that's a great one. I, 
I keep hearing that I think Devion Smith is a guy that, that Harbaugh has really took a liking to. Um, you know, I can maybe see him being the guy, actually. Uh, it still is a close race. I think that's going to be maybe the most contested race in fall camp will be running back still, which, depending on how you look at it, I mean, you could look at that as a good thing or a bad thing. I mean, they haven't really, for the second straight year, there's not really a guy that's kind of taken that job and, and seized it. Um, as far as biggest concern, my my opinion, actually, I kind of think it's that wide receiver. Um, the offensive line, I mean, they bring everybody back except for Jack Miller. Glasgow steps in at center. Uh, I think the offensive line won't be bad. It won't be as bad as it's been the last couple of years. It might not be elite um, by any means, but I do think they'll be more productive than they have been the last couple of seasons. I think you combine that with the coaching and some added experience. I think they'll be better. At wide receiver, though, that you know they have Amara Darbo, they have uh, J.U. Chesson, um, guys that have shown flashes, um, but not they haven't really found any consistent playmakers of that position. Uh, you know, Drake Harris has struggled with injuries pretty much since his senior year of high school. Uh, Freddie Canteen, Mo Ways, Brian Cole, I mean, they, they have bodies, but – no real contributors, no real consistency, or guys that really have had any experience. So, at least on the offensive side of the ball, I think wide receiver is kind of a spot where uh, I think defenses may try to exploit them and, and could pro- probably uh, maybe I'll play him in that position. And last thing before I let you go, let's uh, switch gears to recruiting. Uh, Michigan having a, a very good 2016 recruiting class thus far, and that's the bottom line. It uh, doesn't matter where you get players from. You just need a good class or a great class. They're, they're eighth in the 24-7 sports composite. They have 21 commitments. Ohio State, by comparison, is third. They have 17 commitments. Um, what shocks me, though, and I talked to our Bill Curlick about this earlier in the week, Steve, is 21 commitments, none from the state of Ohio. I mean, it's been, you know, especially when I was growing up, uh, it seemed like Michigan out-recruited Ohio. Out, I'm calling them Ohio now. Michigan out-recruited Ohio State in the state of Ohio, um, and it was pretty embarrassing there for a while. And I'm sure it's just, you know, probably a one-year aberration. And I'm not saying that Harbaugh could have came in this late and out-recruited Urban Meyer for some of the best players from Ohio. I'm just still surprised that out of 21 players, zero are from the state of Ohio. Uh, I'm curious to get your take on that. You know, that, that, that's kind of been a mystery to me, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, they they like Tony Butler out of Lakewood, St. Edward. Uh, I don't know if there's there may be guys higher on their board at corner right now. That's kind of been something that we're a little unclear on. But, you know, the, the thing that's really stood out to me, actually, Dave, you know, because like you said, I think Harbaugh came in almost even too late with the 16 guys to really make any kind of a dent. Um, but Michigan's offered over 100 kids in 2017, and I don't, I'm trying to think if there's if there is anybody in Ohio. There's only a couple, but you guys like Javante Richardson, uh, Danny Davis, uh, you know, guys that if it, if I was Michigan, I'd be offering these guys earlier in the process, uh, knowing that you know an Ohio State offer for a lot of these in-state kids right now is is like a golden ticket. Um, you know, they haven't really been as aggressive in Ohio so far with the younger classes as, as I maybe would have expected them to be at this point, especially considering that they've only offered or that they've offered a higher amount uh, they've been more aggressive in terms of the the actual verbal offer than than host staff was so you know to me with Ohio I'm, I'm really interested to see what direction they go if they start to maybe expand their footprint in Ohio a little bit more or, or if they're just going to stay stay out of there for the most part I mean like I said I think you know I think if you looked at the crystal ball uh, I think a lot of those 17 kids in Ohio are are pretty safe bets to end up as Buckeyes as long as as they get that scholarship offer. So, yeah, you know, we've been asked that a lot. And uh, there's really, right now, for me, there's no uh, great answer. You know, they've worked hard in Florida, Texas, California, and they've they've done some good work in those spots. But, um, you know, their tentativeness, I suppose, I guess would be the right word to put it, in in terms of recruiting Ohio has been somewhat of a mystery. Excellent insights from Steve Lorenz from Wolverine 24-7. We'll have to get you on the show again, Steve. The The game is slated for November 28th in Ann Arbor, of course. We'll have to get you on the week of that game if you're available. Thank you very much for your time and your insights. Awesome. Appreciate it, Dave. Thanks a lot. Thanks to the listeners out there. hope you guys have a great day. Take it away, best damn band in the land. Bye.